welcome to the Leading with Lean podcast. My name is Philip Holt, author of Leading with Lean, The Simplicity of Lean, and Leading Lean by Living Lean. And in this podcast, I narrate all three of my books, chapter by chapter, in which I share with you my over 30 years of experience as a lean leader across many companies globally. Leading with Lean, Chapter 9, Visible Leadership. Genchi Genbutsu. Genchi Genbutsu is the Japanese term for go see and is critical for the lean leader's success. By going to see, visible leadership can be achieved and this goes hand in hand with leadership activism. Going to the Gemba, the place where the work is done and helping to solve problems. However, the Gemba shouldn't be taken to refer exclusively to a manufacturing shop floor. It can be a workstation in a design office, a call centre or an operating theatre. It is, in fact, anywhere where the value and also the waste, is created for the customer. Taiichi Ono, considered the father of TPS, the Toyota production system, said it best. Toyota managers must be sufficiently engaged on the factory floor that they have to wash their hands at least three times a day. Being a visible leader is one of the critical elements of lean thinking, and so, if you leave the lean stuff to your lean people, problem solving to the experts, and Kaizen events as something that you leave to subordinates, then you will also leave lean firmly on the sidelines as just another initiative and a tool-based approach. By going to the Gemba and helping to solve the problem where it is happening, by leading Kaizen events, undertaking Kamishibai, and being seen as a visible leader, you will begin to live the following lean principles. Principle 5. Build a culture which stops and fixes problems to get quality right the first time. Principle 7. Use visual control so that no problems are hidden. Principle nine, grow leaders who thoroughly understand the work, live the philosophy and teach it to others. Principle 10, develop exceptional people and teams who follow your company's philosophy. And finally, principle 12, go and see for yourself to thoroughly understand the situation. Genji Genbutsu. Being a visible leader is not just about being seen, but about being seen to support team members in adding value for the customer. By asking the right questions, helping them to solve problems and removing barriers, the lean leader will help them to help their customers and will graduate as a leader as a teacher. To do this, they must help them to make their workplace and the processes and value streams within it visual. In virtual environments, such as most creative and transactional environments, this is even more important and the use of tools such as ComCell communication cells, visual planning boards and Kanban development boards can be a great way of achieving this visualisation. To quote the wisdom of Ono once again, make your workplace into a showcase that can be understood by everyone at a glance. Creating the showcase. Leading with lean requires that the workplace becomes a showcase of excellence, whereby the status can be understood by everyone at any time and in an interval that is meaningful. This means that the status, say four weeks ago, is not acceptable. It is the status now that matters or, dependent upon the area of the organisation, within a reasonable time interval. This means that on a factory floor, the status within the last few seconds or minutes will be visible, and in the development environment, within the last few hours or day. The lean leader will encounter some initial scepticism and resistance as they begin their visits to the Gemba, as the employees will suspect that this is the typical visit for show without real meaning, resulting in potential criticism and additional workload, or even a change in priorities and direction. However, the lean leader must have the patience to demonstrate through their activism, that the visits will be often and that they will be meaningful. This will build trust with their team members, resulting in improved engagement and an increased focus on excellence and quality in everything that they do. To create the showcase, there are three core elements in the system that they need to be created. First, portion canary. Secondly, daily management. And third, problem solving. Horsing canary is so important that I dedicated a chapter to it, chapter six. It is, as with most elements of lean thinking, very easy to understand as a tool, but quite difficult to embed as an element of the culture of the organisation. Nevertheless, its establishment from the top of the organisation is essential and, through the catchball method, once objective cascading has been established, the visualisation will ensure that everyone in the organisation sees their contribution to the breakthrough objectives. When this transparent visualisation of the objective cascade is observed in an organisation, it has great impact as employees can easily select one of the objectives in the area that they are in 
and speak to the team members about its status. This transparency engenders an inherent openness in the conversation and there is a certain confidence in the demeanour of the people talking about their goals. The Phillips Avent manufacturing site, which was previously in Glemsford, the United Kingdom, is a fantastic example of this, whereby everyone in the organisation could show very clearly their hosting objectives and describe in simple terms their contribution to the business goals. Daily management is an essential process in a lean organisation and relies heavily on making the workplace a showcase. Essentially, it is about short interval control, which simply put means that we know as early as possible when there is a problem. An oft used analogy is that of the captain of a ship who is navigating to an island. The voyage should take four days. However, in the first iteration of the voyage, she checks her location after four days, finding that the ship has gone off course and that she needs to readjust its navigation. The journey takes seven days to complete. On the second voyage, the captain adjusts her interval to daily, still having to adjust her course, but on a more frequent basis and reducing the voyage duration to only five days. However, on the third voyage, she makes a check on the navigation on an hourly basis and ensures that the course is almost perfect, delivering operational excellence and a voyage time of only four days. Whilst the analogy is fictitious, it illustrates the importance of short interval control and is applicable whether the management is of an FMCG, fast moving consumer goods manufacturing line, that of a Boeing 747 or a new product introduction process. Whatever the process may be, the appropriate short interval control, visualised to allow a quick understanding and diagnosis of the current performance, is essential. When implementing short interval control to support daily management, each area of the organisation will need to think carefully about its leading indicators. Too often, enterprises have lagging indicators that tell us how we performed last quarter, month or week, and it is one of the biggest challenges of any team, group or department to determine which metrics will tell them quickly how they are performing. Most manufacturing lines will allow this to be set up relatively quickly, as whilst it may be the norm to look at weekly deliveries, quality of performance and cost, it's relatively easy to start managing performance on the basis of hourly output, quality and cost performance. The main challenge will be to give the localised team the support, coaching and empowerment to both monitor and manage on a short interval. Although it may be easier to implement short interval control in manufacturing, it's just as important to do so in all other areas of the organisation and types of business. What is considered to be a short interval might change, but the reality is that, whether it be a manufacturing line or a new product introduction programme, most organisations wait too long before realising that they are off course. While short interval control might be an extremely important part of daily management, it is not its entirety. And to ensure that the organisation creates the showcase, it must establish an effective way to visualise, discuss and problem solve performance. This is where the com cell or communication cell, in some cases daily management board, is a central component of daily management, offering a performance cockpit for the team members. Done well, the team members should be able to clearly see and understand their performance, identifying where they have deviations and problem solving to get back on target. Once again, the com cell at the level of a lean tool is simple and easy to set up, but the challenge comes in the team and its leaders having the right behaviour and competence to utilise it to its full effect. This requires that the team is trained effectively and that a standardised approach is taken to its setup, but at the same time ownership is established in the team. At Royal Phillips, that was established through what was called daily management boot camps, where lean experts took their local leadership and their teams through the establishment of a com cell based upon a standard but through the boot camp gain its adoption and localization by the team. Hi Philip here, sorry to interrupt the narration of this particular chapter but I just wanted to remind you that all of my personal profits from the books go to charity and so if you would like to buy a book it would really be helpful Otherwise, if you feel that the podcast is sufficient, then please feel free to make a donation to my current charity, which is Women's Aid. It's a great charity which helps to stop domestic violence for women and children. Thank you. Once the team has a comcell in place, visualising the people, performance and continuous improvement aspects of their area, they will observe underperformance or problems. This brings it to the third element of creating the showcase, which is problem solving. 
problem solving. The problem with problem solving is that everyone in their own way solves problems. What makes a difference is the method that they use to problem solve. Whilst this book is not intended to delve deep into the Lean Toolkit, problem solving deserves more than just a cursory discussion. Most teaching of Lean will stress the importance of true root cause analysis and problem solving at the level of root cause, but this is too simplistic, as another problem with problem solving is that there are too many of them to do all justice and to truly solve them all at root cause. It is for this very reason that most organisations do such a bad job of problem solving, as they begin the process many times, but rarely finish due to a lack of time and resources. It's therefore crucial that in our visual showcase, being the visible leader, we teach prioritisation and the management of problems at the different levels of the organisation. This essentially means that we're going to have certain expectations, the first regarding the number of problems solved at each level of the organisation. One of the biggest challenges that the lean leader will establish in an organisation is that the propensity for all problems to be solved at the leadership level will cease. Instead, we will expect over 85% by number, not scale of the problem, of problems to be solved at the Gemba by the teams doing the work. They will identify, prioritise and solve most of the organisation's problems quickly and practically, as we will have provided them with skills, motivation and empowerment to do so. Of the less than 15% of problems that escalate above the team leader at the Gemba, around two-thirds of them will be solved at the next level, that of the group leader or area manager, meaning that less than 5% by number of the remaining problems will get to the senior leadership level. These will, of course, be big problems and require a lot of horsepower to solve, but these are precisely the big problems that are getting in the way of the organisation's ambitions and will become the horse and cannery objectives the big problems that need to be solved to make performance breakthroughs. And in the book, you would see a triangle or pyramid, which shows the team leader level uh, solving less than 85% of the problems or up to 85% of the problems, the group leader level solving the next 10 to 15%, and then finally the management team or leadership team level dealing with less than 5% of the problems. This is numerically problems, obviously the scale of the problem increases as you move up that triangle. The second expectation is that at each level the problems are prioritised. This is best done through a proper definition of the problem, which is also a way of ensuring that the problem to be solved is properly understood and can therefore be satisfactorily solved. There is an old saying that a problem properly stated is half solved. A simple way of establishing the problem statement and one that, with practice, can be done quickly for the smallest of problems is a 5W and 1H approach. This approach is sometimes confused with 5 times Y, but should be distinguished from this as it is earlier in the problem solving cycle and at this stage, that of defining the problem, we do not actually want to start trying to get to the root cause. 5W plus 1H is a very effective problem definition approach for the lean leader and is utilised by answering the following six questions. First, what is the problem? Second, why is it a problem? Thirdly, who is it a problem for? Fourthly, when is it a problem? Fifthly, where is it a problem? And then finally, how much of a problem is it? The importance of this approach is that it provides a data-driven approach to defining the problem statement and avoids the team working from a personal perception or instinct. The questions have a certain element of overlap and it's not intended to be an exact science, but a problem statement should be generated based upon facts that adequately answer all of the six questions. The beauty of this approach is that it both allows the team to determine those problems that may not be the, that big and provides fact-based evidence to manage stakeholders who may perceive problems to be larger than they really are. Ultimately, it should provide the team with a method by which they can rapidly determine which problems they are going to focus on solving, as it is inevitable that they will have more than they can manage in the immediate term. The team at the Gemba will do this relatively rapidly and will utilise the ComSell as part of their daily management process to identify problems and then make the decisions on which one to tackle. An elegant way of doing this is the 3C on the ComSell which normally sits under its performance section and is named to represent the fact that it is made up of columns that read concern, cause and countermeasure. And in the book you'll see an example of a 3C uh, box or 3C problem solving uh, matrix.
The team will identify concerns over their performance and rapidly draw up the actual problem statement, determining how big a problem it is, where it is a low priority, they may decide to take no action. Whereas it, if it's a moderate problem, they may decide to take some immediate action, although it might be that they don't get to the root cause and instead implement a rapid countermeasure that addresses perhaps the symptoms only and doesn't necessarily address the root cause. However, where the problem is clear and present issue, they will assign an owner to address it. Rapidly 3C problem solving is great for rapidly prioritising and solving the majority of those 85% roughly of problems that the team will resolve, either on a short-term, symptom-based level or at the root cause. However, for a few of those problems, and especially for those that are escalated to the next level, A3 problem solving will be initiated, where problems are taken by a small team and thoroughly solved, truly addressing the root cause of the problem and implementing countermeasures that will make a difference in the longer term. In some cases, the team at the Gemba may put in place short-term countermeasures to address the symptoms, sometimes called containment actions, and get better at dealing with the issues that they are dealing with on a daily basis, whilst the overall problem is es escalated for the long-term solution that deals with the root cause. Nevertheless, whatever the level that the problem solving is undertaken at, the lean leader must ensure that the countermeasures implemented result in a Kaizen, an improvement to the standard, Otherwise, the countermeasures will be short-term, unsustainable in nature. This is the part of problem-solving that really sets the lean organisation apart from traditional organisations. Kamishibai. The use of Japanese words in lean thinking is simultaneously natural due to its famous Japanese practitioners and also potentially a barrier to engagement. I personally try to limit the use of those areas of lean thinking where the word is either in the common vocabulary such as Kaizen, or where I feel that it is important to explain the difference between the lean approach that it describes and its local language translation. Kamishibai is one such word. While its English translation, layered audit, is not incorrect, I feel that the word audit implies the traditional approach of a poacher and gamekeeper relationship between the auditor and audited. Instead, I use the word commishibai to describe its place in visible leadership, whereby the lean leader uses this simple but structured approach to interact with team members, coaching and embodying the role of leader as a teacher, one of the lean leadership paradigms. The approach of commishibai is covered in more detail in Chapter 12, Coaching Leadership, the important element being that visible leadership gives real meaning to the interactions with the team members, driving sustained and continuous improvement of the lean system into the organisation. A colleague of mine describes it as the glue of the lean operating system because it is the way in which the leadership conveys the importance of standardisation and adherence to those standards, as well as ensuring compliance. The most important thing about Kamishibai is its differences from a traditional audit. It's regular, small scale, leader led and focused on a rapid problem solving and improvement approach, Kaizen, in a short period of time. Above all, it's about checking the process, not the person, and building the visibility of the lean leader in the visual showcase that is created during the lean transformation. Visible leadership is essential for a lean organisation, and it alone can be the critical success factor for the essential act of engaging our people in the lean transformation. If you're interested in reading more about this, The Lean Turnaround by Art Byrne has some great examples of how he has been a visible leader throughout his successful leadership career.